Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, now that we're all here, it's the highlight of the day. Sorry I made you walk around so long, but actually, my secret's already. Oh, that's right, we were... Wandering around, oh, and that's right, uh, Beret Girl had something she wanted to say to Fuma, of all people, secretly, and then we spied on them. And, uh, Toki-chan was being carried around on people's backs. Uh, okay. Kurumi-san faced us with a clouded expression and stopped mid-sentence. Kurumi-san? It can't be. It's still here? Oh! He. <laughs> I see. Yeah, of course. Okay, I'm gonna show you now. Ta-da! Kurumi-san faced us again, but this time with a wide smile and her arms spread out. Ta-da! It's just a leg. Not that, Fukun. Look by your feet. My feet? Oh! Shion, that's the name of Borego. It was Kozuki-san that exclaimed in surprise first. She pointed at the flowers blooming by the lake. Look should here? Flowers, apparently. Uh, looks more like just leaves to me, but... Okay, I'll take your word for it, game. They were small, small flowers that could have been missed easily, but they bloomed as blue as the skies today. Oh, are they gonna be forget-me-nots? I bet they're gonna be forget-me-not flowers. Forget-me-nots! Right on! They represent the essence of what we, Earth as Knights, are about. I wanted to show you this. I wanted to show this to all of you, all this time. Wow, they're so pretty. But, Gian John, I thought forget-me-nots are supposed to bloom in spring. That's the strange bit. I thought they would have wilted by now. I wonder why they're still in bloom. I only believe what I see with my own eyes. I think they were waiting for us. Waiting for the day we all got back together again. How is that believing what you see with your own eyes? You believe that flowers magically waited for you? Something that they would have no concept of? Sorry for bumping the table. But believing in like destiny and all this crap, that's like the opposite of... Um any of this. Like, this is the opposite of believing what you see with your own eyes. Like, believing only what you see with your own eyes would be, like, oh, kind of like uh, the ultimate form of skepticism. And this is, like, the opposite. You're making so many assumptions here. Maybe you're right, Kurumi-san. Destiny exists. Destiny exists because these flowers are blooming out of season? That's insane. See? I told you it was worth coming here. Yes, it was. Thank you. He. <laughs> and it was in. And it was in best timing too. True. I think I've gotten my thoughts together now. I hope you're not thinking what I'm thinking. Oh, sorry. I hope you're thinking what I'm thinking. What? What's this all about? You're gonna tell us what you think IMA is about, right? Yes, listen. To my... And my... Conclusion! What? We're finally going to... I really hope that, uh... They're way off base. Because... I can't imagine them being anything close to correct about whatever this is. Achievement Unlocked Theories. Heard. Aw, oh, come on, don't do another time skip on us. Oh, what a cop out. A few days later, Kurumi-san and I were sitting by a bench in Matsumi Park, which was by the pedestrian deck. Kurumi-san looked nervous and fidgeted a little, but in time she calmed down and slowly began to talk. 
You can. Are you sure my my theory made sense? Yes, I believe in your theory. It doesn't mean I don't believe the in the others. Um. Okay. So either Yuder is lying, or their theories are somehow all compatible. I smiled, and she looked reassured. Her tense shoulders relaxed. The other day, we listened to Togi-san, Kozuki-san, and Kurumi-san's thoughts on IMA, and voted on whose theory was most likely to be correct. Why would you vote? That's not how... Okay, whatever. Togi-san had thought IMA was caused by a sort of virus. A virus? That seems... unlikely. Hey, Leonic, good to see you. Glad to, um, have a familiar face here for the cringe. Kozuki-san believed that the area within the perimeter was a parallel world. That feels... more likely than just a virus. Like, I don't understand how a virus could affect only us. As, like, causing people to forget. And also, a virus wouldn't have a perimeter. That definitely doesn't make sense. But a virus wouldn't... How would you explain the app on our phones? And the fact that, like, there's a perimeter to the effects of things? That doesn't... Yeah, no, parallel word makes more sense. Are we playing dirty anime games? You know it. Uh, actually, th this hasn't gotten... I mean, the dirtiest this has gotten is probably the belt under her bust here. Because we have to show off the anime booba. Um, but yeah, hi Supi Doman, good to see you here. Glad to have uh here for some of the cringe. So I'm I'm leaning towards parallel world. What's what's the third theory? And Kurumi sounds theory that had the most votes was The herd is trying to shake off the exceptions, right? It's not anime without giant knockers? You know it. If you were going to say it in a cool way, something like that, yeah. But I'd simply say, everyone wants to get rid of us. E everyone wants to get rid of us? Okay, so I think this is referring to, like, they were talking about the idea that if everyone came to the consensus that we didn't exist, then we must not exist. Which isn't how reality works. It doesn't work by the consensus of the majority. But, okay, we're... Humoring this idea. Kurumi-san's theory was that the people in the University of Tsukuba were similar, and all of them belonged to the same herd. Uh, okay. This is the theory we, we all voted for? It was a ninja anime you saw, it, and it was funny watching all these ninjas bounce around, all stealthy with giant bouncing booba. Well, yeah. I mean, that's what ninjas are supposed to do. Bounce around with the giant booba. And since we did not fit in with the herd, we were being rejected. Oh man. To be rejected so hard that everyone forgets you? Every single day? That would be... That would be pretty awful. The method was to delete us. The method was to delete us from everyone's memories. Use womanly charms to distract in combat. Very ninja-like. I feel like... That was a legitimate ninja technique, although maybe, maybe I just saw that in an anime and thought that they were talking about a real technique. There's a part I like about your theory. It's not nice that we are all rejected by the herd as a whole, but on the other hand, it means that we, as the outcasts, have formed a smaller herd ourselves, right? Ah, Sarankaruga, Ninja Flash. Uh, I'm not sure if I've seen Ninja Flash. That's why you have those games on your wish list. But, um, I remember really falling... I felt, I remember coming across, like, the... I think it was, like, official, um, like, concept art for Saran Karuga. And really falling in love with the character designs. And then sitting down to watch the anime and being like, oh, this is kind of bland. And then finding out that it was actually based on games. And just being really disappointed, like, from going, like, this high point of really loving the character designs. They've got, like, this kind of, like, 
pastel softness and roundness to them. And finding out like the actual games and being like, oh, that's all this is. If we think of it that way, that means IMA is something that proves our bond. Uh, truthfully, real women ninjas would have worked as escorts to keep their enemies close and gather info and all that. Yeah. Then, I guess it's not such a bad thing. What's this? What's this face, Kayan? Uh, was that corny? <laughs> I scratch my head. Oh, anime scratching head pose. Gotta put that uh, elbow way up in the air. I scratch my head, somewhat shy that Kurumi-san had gone silent. Wow. Huh? That's amazing, Yukon. Why did you bring out your trowel? What, did, what does that mean? She took my hand and leaned forward, her eyes shining. Oh, and the, the trowel's gone again. I guess they just couldn't do a, like, excited pose without her holding her trowel. They didn't have the budget for that. Even Kayan chan didn't think of it that way. I hadn't believed my theory had more validity than Chogi-chan's or Sik-chan's, but now... I feel like it's perfect. I can move forward with it. Thanks, Yukun. It's because of you. Hee <laughs> hee. Yeah. No problem. Meh. You're a bit close, Kurumi-san. More anime head scratching. She didn't let go of my hand, but leaned back with a pout. Why are you complaining, Yukun? You never complain that you're too close to Togi-chan. Why am I not allowed? Isn't that a bit unfair? Uh, oh, sorry. Why am I not allowed? Isn't that a bit unfair? Uh, I wonder why. <laughs> I looked away and tried to brush off her complaint. It was because of the difference in their height, and also because they were nearby. Kurumi-san's assets provided a different view. Well, gotta talk about the booba. We gotta talk about the booba. Because of their difference in height, and also because... Uh, when they were nearby, Kurumi-san's assets provided a different view. But, was it really just that? It might not just be the booba. <laughs> okay, well, I didn't know where this was going. I didn't know we were going to be talking about the booba. So may maybe maybe it's a slightly dirty anime game, but really, aren't all anime games dirty? Everyone else is late. Kurumi-san stretched her legs out. And pedaled them on the ground forwardly. Pedaled them on the. How do you pedal your legs on the ground? And also, is she still holding her hands? We're just too early. It was still five minutes to midday when we were supposed to hold a meeting. It was purely coincidence that Kurumi san and I decided to come 30 minutes early. Everyone else is late. She stopped moving her legs and mumbled. Then she bent her head down and blushed. What's wrong? What is wrong? She said sarcastically, and I decided not to push the subject. Whoop, sorry for bumping the table. Uh... She's giving us weird vibes. This is not like the normal Kayan. Uh, and I just... There we go. Before IMA, we were part of the University of Tsukuba, part of the herd. And now that we are rejected, it means that a change has occurred in us. If we could find out what made us different from the others, we might be able to fix IMA. That was what we had decided to discuss, now that we had chosen Kurumi-san's theory. But it wasn't easy to find out what exactly had changed between now and then, before IMA started. Mention the robot girl. You've seen the robot girl, like, twice now. And no one else seems to remember her. And she was there the very day everything changed. 
Yuta, remember the robot girl. Because to know the answer, we had to exclude all the areas affected by IMA in our current lives. We had to distinguish what had changed because of IMA, and what would not have changed regardless, and compare those aspects to what we were before. So we decided to take till the end of the week to think it over, and meet today here to discuss our thoughts. Kurumi-san had a basket next to her, and in my bag I had a lot of snacks I had bought on the way. We decided we might as well have a picnic during our discussion. Gurumi-san was acting strangely today. She clutched the front of her skirt and stared at the far skies. We had never stayed silent so long in each other's company before. Hmm, maybe I had done something wrong and she didn't want to talk to me anymore. No, oh, I can't stand this any longer. Please, everyone, just show up. She muttered under her breath. We've been here for a while already. What? We both jumped in surprise. B Boomer? Since when? Togi-chan's supposed to be the stealthy one. Well, I decided to quietly watch you two in case something interesting happened. Besides, I wasn't hiding or anything. You two simply chose to ignore me. Well, to be fair, Fuma, life is easier when we ignore you. Now that I've said that, I'm beginning to feel unwanted. <laughs> so sorry, Fuma. Damn, Chan, you really acted like a cat that got its tail stepped on. More like a dog. That was kind of cute. Do it again. I want to watch from the front. One more time, please. <sighs> this is why we ignore you, Fuma. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, look. It's Shichan and Togi-chan. Hey! Rumi-san turned away from Fuma and waved her hands energetically. But Kozuki-san didn't wave back. She pedaled on determinately because... Hey, y'all. Did you wait for long? Togi-san was sitting behind her, waving ami amiably. Amiably. I know how to pronounce the word. My mouth does not want to pronounce it. meizuki san please get off. I can't do this anymore. kozuki san was red in the face and... Bang. She crashed. I knew that would happen. Thank heavens we didn't make those two bring food. The food's the priority? I walked over and helped them up. Are you two alright? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Ouch. Hmm. With my secret martial arts super abilities, a small fall like that is nothing. When did you learn secret martial arts? Around the time you dropped me on my head. I was inspired when I got that bruise. Ouch, you still remember that? Togi-chan, you're the type that holds grudges, aren't you? I just have a very good memory. I may look like this, but I'm going to be a doctor, you know. The part that says, I may look like this is the biggest of your problems, Meizumi-san. Can I ask if you brought a picnic sheet? It was your responsibility for today, if I recall. A picnic sheet? You mean a picnic blanket? A picnic sheet. Yeah, let's just throw down some newspapers. Of course I did. It's right here. Togi-san pulled out a large, thick, blue plastic sheet. The type people use for cherry blossom flo uh, viewing. A large, thick, blue plastic sheet. You mean a tarpaulin? Are we just going to sit on a tarp? That sounds like fun. Ah, a blue sheet? That's so unsexy. Why did you need your picnic blanket to be sexy? It's a picnic blanket, Fuma. This is the most practical. 
It repels water, it's comfortable, it's easy to clean. You sound like you use it every day. Oops. I saw... Uh, wait, can is Wolf Girl. I saw Togi-chan sleeping on that on the pavement the other night when I walked home. What? Is Togi homeless? Oh wait, Togi has to pay money to get into the area ever since they cordoned off the university. The government or something of some research group has cordoned off the entire university, so now we can't even leave the area of um, forgetfulness. Except for uh, Togi-san who lives at just outside the area and has to get a visitor's badge and pay money to enter the area. And also, uh, Xion can somehow enter and exit the area via some secret lab friend who lives outside? I don't know, some researcher that uh, we haven't actually been introduced to. But I'm guessing they might, there's either a teleporter or a secret tunnel. But yeah, Togi, are you homeless? S stop that! All of you, don't look at me like that! Alright, alright. We, we're just gonna skip past the fact that it sounds like Togi's homeless now? Okay. Puma took the blue sheet away from Togi-san's grasp and began spreading it by Matsumi Lake. We all began taking our places on it. It looked fun though. Maybe I should try it someday. Blue sheet outdoor camping. I don't recommend it. You get a lot of bugs biting you. If you slept outside on a blue sheet, Kanchan, I'm sure you'd find all sorts of other vermin crawling all over you. Ugh. Puma, shut up. Don't worry, I'd kill all of them if they came near her. So, Kurumi-san, please don't act on the idea. You don't want anybody getting murdered, do you? Yeah. Let's hurry up and eat. I skipped breakfast just for this picnic. I'm famished. I couldn't wait to taste Kayan Chan's cooking, so I came in the best condition to eat it all. I didn't bring a lot, though. That doesn't matter. Hunger is the best sauce, they say. I'll enjoy the meal, even if it doesn't fill me up. I'll take quantity over quality for dinner later. Sorry for bumping the table. I'll go to an... Wait, what? Uh, hang on. Ba -ba -ba. I'll take quantity over quality for dinner later. I'll go to an eat it all and stuff my face. Yuta, you're coming with me. Okay, okay. I will. I ate breakfast before I came, though. Although, it was just a piece of bread and a glass of milk. I looked at Kurumi-san's basket, and my mouth began to water. Ever since I moved to Sukuba, it was rare that I ate anything handmade, and it was Kurumi-san's cooking too. I couldn't help but anticipate it. Haha, <laughs> but I have to warn you all, I'm not such a great cook. Sudden question, who cooks daily? Uma asked, and only Kurumi-san raised her hand. I'm not surprised that Togi-san doesn't cook, but it's unexpected that you don't, Kozuki-san. Um, you didn't wait, raise your hand either, Yuta, so... Like, shut the fuck up. It's not that I don't like to cook. I really do. It's just that... I try to do exactly as the recipe says. I don't even mistake sugar for salt. I, at the very end, I get confused, and things always go wrong, and I make some sort of disgusting junk. Why is it? Tell me, why is it? Kozuki-san burst out in tears. Kozuki-san hugged her gently and shook her head sadly. Sorry to hear that, dear. It must be hard for you. Yuta, it's your doing. Me? It's alright. I can be useful for other things. Kozuki-san said as she pulled out a large bottle with a red label. Is that wine? I thought about wine too, but this is just applesauce. Apple juice. <laughs> Not apples. Because this is an anime. Mmm. 
Apple juice. Okay. Sure, this is apple juice. Well, even though we're in university, we couldn't possibly be drinking. I said something along the lines of, I'd like something other than bugs sometimes. And this got sent to me. Ooh, it's fresh juice? The type that isn't made from concentrate. It's been a while since I've seen that. That's why no matter what you make, uh, what you do, you can't make good food, yes. Because I guess making good food would just be boring. And making bad food is hilarious. We're lucky that didn't break in the fall. What? Chi-chan, Chi-chan! That's got a bottle cap on it. We don't have a bottle opener with us, do we? Oh! Oh no! Uh... Fuck! Chi-chan! You can get a bit wacky sometimes. Can't whack the cap off, though. Tan-chan! You've got a sharp tongue. Yeah, okay. Can't whack the cap off. That's real witty. There is a bottle opener right here. Toki san said as she pointed. Huh? I looked to the direction and slapped my knee as a light bulb went up. Hang on, let me read that uh, line through again. I looked to the direction and slapped my knee as a light bulb went on. That's, um... That's an interesting sentence. I don't really have anything to say, but, uh... The hell of a sentence. Aha! I see it! It was an observatory deck in the middle of Matsumi Park, overlooking the lake. It was made of concrete and... It had a bulbous top, which did make it look like a bottle opener. Oh yeah, I guess I can kind of see it. It was another landmark characteristic of Tsukuba. Just the way the rocket in Central Park was. It's quite distinctive, isn't it? Some students can call it, some students and teachers call it, Bottle Opener Tower. Uh, so what exactly is cringe about this? Seems like a pretty normal slice of life VN to me. Uh, yeah. I think that's what people find cringe about it. It's just, the, it's anime-ness. An anime-ness? <laughs> Anime-ness. Uh, but it's also compelling. Like, it's not... You're the resident via, uh, visual novel nerd, so you don't know, you're used to this? Yeah, that's probably why it doesn't seem that strange to you. And that, that's honestly, I've been surprised by how, um, cringe some of the people, uh, have found this. Because I'm like, I'm sure there are way cringier stuff out there. This is like, we're starting at the top here. It's not, we can only go down from here when it comes to, like, visual novels. Really? That's reliable information, coming from the most experienced among us. So, somehow, I don't feel like I've received a compliment. Yeah. So I'm excited to, to, for the future stories, as we just take a slow, long, slow descent into madness. As we look for cringier and cringier stories, just to get that same high. Look, we've got the bottle open, Toki san said as she raised the bottle. The bottle cap was gone. I wouldn't call that open, more like the tub got sliced off. How did you do that? I don't know, don't ask me. Oh, I bet she used her vampire powers. Really? Never mind, who cares how she did it? She's clearly a vampire. Like, there's no disputing it now. Now it's not like, oh, these are just coincidences, or like, these are just illusions that they're making for the character. How could she have gotten sliced the, the top of a bottle off if she doesn't have, like, supernatural strength or something? Clearly her pointing at the tower was just to distract everyone while she did this. Umakun, can you take out the cups? You're in charge of the cups in place, right? Yeah, if you say so, Xian chan Uma didn't look convinced, but he started handing cups around. Talking about distinctive buildings, the rocket at Central Park is fixed now, isn't it? Yes, it's back to normal, like magic. Spring has just started, 
and we've already got so many mysteries to solve. Whoops. Kozuki-san lifted the bottle of apple juice quickly, before Kurumi-san's cup overflowed. Kurumi-san lifted her full cup carefully to her lips and took a slip. She smiled widely. I'm going to try and read that sentence again, but without all the weird emphasis on the wrong syllables. Kurumi-san lifted her full cup carefully to her lips and took a sip. She smiled widely. It's so good! There were many others that were enjoying their weekend by Matsumi Lake. It was so peaceful. It was as if IMA never happened. With the lady walking her dog and the lovers leaning against each other, they were all from a separate herd. While we enjoyed our picnic, we were, nonetheless, outcasts. Rejects. Yukun, Yukun, why are you frowning? Don't look so stern. Try some of Kayan chans cooking. I turned around to see her lifting a piece of omelette to my mouth. She stared at me with her large eyes. Um... Are you waiting for him to open his mouth? Oh... Rumi san froze for a moment before she quickly ate the omelette herself. Um, I thought you wanted me to try that. I... N no, of course not. Who can... Of course I wasn't trying to feed him. What are you talking about? Ha ha ha. Yum, this is really tasty. Hey, Enchan, you're acting really funny today. I... I'm not. I'm just imagining things. Here, Yukon. Yukon. Here, Yukon. Your chopsticks. Kurumi-san said and pressed a pair of chopsticks into my hand. You're right. The omelette is very good. I was being honest. It was really good. But it would be too much for me to say I would have preferred it if Kurumi-san had fed me. But would it be too much for me to say I would have preferred it if Gurumi-san had fed me? Uh, I don't want to admit it, but it's so good. I think I should seriously consider begging you to take me on as your disciple. Kozuki-san said as she sampled every mo morsel of Gurumi-san's cooking. She looked both happy and mortified at the same time. Chi-chan, Chi-chan, putting the disciple thing aside. Can I ask if you've been trying all the difficult recipes and hope you would get really good fast? Uh, or were you trying to be efficient and do many things at the same time? Oh, how did you know? Or maybe you were taking the recipes so seriously you weighed every ingredient to the last gram and burned the pot while you concentrated on the scales. How, how could you tell? If you start with the easy stuff, I think your cooking would improve even if you don't learn from me. Master, I worship you. If I have two friends that can cook well, I bet my nutrition intake will improve all the more. Yes. Togi chan san, I guess that means you don't have any intention whatsoever to learn how to cook. What should I do? Food that is cooked for me is definitely a thousand times better than food I cook for myself. So why should I even bother from the start? It's hard to admit that your theory does have a good point. Kurumi-san, can I try this? Sion san pointed at a sandwich. Of course you can. I made it for you all. Go ahead. <laughs> I've made this before. It's easy enough since you just need to put stuff in between the bread. I break the bread too this time. Wow, you've rendered Togi-san, Togi-chan-san speechless. Boo, I had hoped you would come from the same, doesn't have as much womanly skills as they look hurt like us, Kean chan And here, you suddenly display your superpowers? 
you definitely have an ulterior motive. Well, I wanted to prove that I could do better than sad bread, you see? You make it sound as if you only tried hard to impress Kiriha-kun. After all, he's the only one that has eaten your sad bread. Who said cringe? Um... Mostly Hattie, I think, um, and uh, Devil Bird, but... Uh, I think when we were first started playing this, Hattie said that uh, this story was so cringe he was going to shit. <laughs> No, that's not, um, you, you see, the birds and, and the fish had it too, so, uh... Oh, listen to this. I'm really proud of this. This time, I cultivated the yeast for the bread too. I didn't use the dry yeast they sell at the stores. You cultivated yeast? I can't even begin to imagine. How difficult that is. But you don't need to use dry yeast. You, want, you can get like frozen yeast. Or refrigerated yeast rather, not frozen. Well, actually I don't know if you could really get that at your standard supermarket. You kind of need to go for like an actual wholesaler for that. But still, that would be the next step up from using dry yeast. Not cultivating your own. Wow, for real? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Togi's gonna cough up blood. I guess that was a vital body blow to her. Oh, okay, Anchan, you're beginning to look like you come from a super class of women. Is that what people call social inequality? I'm going to faint. Ugh. Uh, Sunrider or Crystalline? Well, yeah, I'll definitely add those to my, uh, wish list at the very least. Um, yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's definitely gonna be the plan from here on out once we finish this. Saturdays will be our kind of cringy visual novel day. Although we'll probably be doing lots of visual novels throughout the week. Uh, but this, this is where we save it for the most anime, the most cringy stuff will be Saturdays. Hmm, I've seen a lot of natural yeast bread around, but I never knew you could make it at home. It's made from fruit or grain. It's easier than you think, although it does take some time. And the smell, the smell of cultivating your own yeast would be freaking horrible. This one is made from raisins, because raisins are available at any time of the year and be kept easily at home. It tastes better than dry yeast, and it's really fun to make. It makes me happy to see the bubbles form in the glass bottles when I cultivate them. If you imagine all these tiny little living organisms working away hard so they can make something tasty, it's so cute, right? They're pretty cute under a microscope too, kinda gummy and bouncy looking. rumi san looked dreamy as she cupped her cheeks with her hands, but to be honest, I couldn't share the sentiment. Although I put so much effort into the bread, the jam, greens, and tuna inside are bought from the store. <laughs> so, I'd say the BLT sandwich is my recommendation. It's the freshest of the lot. I've forgotten what BLT stands for, although I see it all the time. Uh, bacon, lettuce, tomato. It's not that hard, uh, Utah. Aren't they the first letters of the ingredients? common sense. Bacon, lettuce, and tamago. Tamago? Really? Xi'an-chan, T stands for tomato. Why would T be in Japanese? There's no egg in there. What? No, that's... that can't be true. Wait, you mean that you were serious? That wasn't a joke? I, I can't believe I had that wrong for 22 years. I feel like the world has betrayed me. You're overreacting. Oh, yum. So good. 
Togi-san, you're relentless. You simply went and ate the recommendation while your friends are in deep pain. There's only a limited quantity, you know. I know. That's why I said you're relentless. We have different priorities. Togi-san replied coolly and continued eating the BLT sandwich. Here, Yukon. Have some, too. Th thanks. Kurumi-san passed me a sandwich, and my heart skipped. I didn't think I could concentrate on the sandwich, and if she kept looking at me like that. But I was wrong. Kurumi-san's BLT sandwich was too good. The bread was soft and bouncy, and the ingredients were cr crunchy and fresh. It went down my throat easily, and tasted of happiness. A man who married her in the future, that got to eat her cooking regularly, would be one lucky fellow. As I imagined that, I found myself smiling, but at the same time, something sharp prickled at my heart. I mean, just because she gets married doesn't necessarily mean she's going to be doing all the cooking. She's going to university, isn't she? I forget what she was studying, but she might be the breadwinner of the, the household. Pardon the pun, of course. During our picnic, we forgot about IMA and simply talked the way friends do. We emptied Gurumi-san's basket of its entire contents. While we picked on the snacks I bought, Chion-san Ch finally started the meeting. I think the picnic's almost over. Let's talk about the more serious things. Oh, I'd almost forgotten that's why we gathered today. We're supposed to compare what's changed before and after IMA, right? Yes, did you all think about it? About that! Rumi-san suddenly exclaimed and stood up. I've got something to say. Can I go first? What's the matter? You're awfully enthusiastic. Why not? kurumi sans the one that decided we'll have this meeting. She was the first one to present her theory on IMA, too. Right. Go on ahead, Kayan chan Yeah. Um... Hang on, let me take another drink. Ugh, it is getting so hot here. Yeah, um... Despite her sudden outburst, Kurumi-san suddenly went silent. Hmm? Kn chan Isn't that uncharacteristic of you? No, I mean, it wasn't. I wasn't someone like this before. That's where I think I've changed, and... No, let me start from the beginning. I shouldn't run away. That would definitely be uncharacteristic of me. Kurumi-san closed her eyes and pressed her hands over her heart. Then she breathed deeply. You can! She turned my way and called out my name. Is this going to be a confession? Is she going to confess her love to for us right in front of everyone else? Y yes I instinctively straightened my back and responded. She turned bright red and began talking quickly, like Kozuki-san. Before IMA, I never... Oh, hang on, let me... Now I'm getting confused, because now I'm going trying to use uh, Kozuki's voice for uh, Kayan, and I don't think that's quite what they meant. Right in front of their sandwiches. Yes, exactly, Leonic. Before IMA, I never had nights when I couldn't sleep because I was thinking about something. And I never lost my tongue when I faced someone else. I wasn't able to smile, because I felt awkward, ever. Oh dear. She's talking about being in love with us, but she thinks that it's just because of IMA. Oh boy, this is going to be awkward. I thought it was IMA's fault at first. I convinced myself it was inevitable my heart would beat faster, and I'd have sleepless nights because this is just too irregular. Yeah, okay. Um, but... but... Okay, so you don't think it's IMA's fault. 
Uh, then why are you talking about this in front of everyone else? But then, there was a moment when I realized I was happy. And then I understood. IMA was just an excuse I made for myself. It only affected a small part of my life. The real thing that changed me isn't IMA, but you, Yukon. Because of you, I've turned from simple sunny Kayan-chan to someone that is mixed up in this hazy, ticklish sort of emotion. Uh-huh, Kayan, why are you saying all of this in front of everyone else? Because of you, Yukon, I've become part of this renegade herd. I think that's what happened. When she finally stopped talking, she looked tired and breathed heavily. I couldn't process the whole of her confession. I was getting confused. I just got the fact that she believed it was my fault. <laughs> She's gonna catch flies. <laughs> Did I do something wrong to you? I asked, partly afraid. She widened her eyes and blinked. Wow, you're so dense. Even Kayan chan is stunned at how dense you can be. Yeah, you can. You're a bit of a fucking idiot. Now I was definitely being attacked. Sorry. Does that mean you're rejecting me? W wait, what do you mean rejecting? I just told you I've fallen in love with you. Maybe I wasn't so direct, but still. Oh, they're actually behaving kind of like, um... Sorry? She, they're actually behaving kind of like human beings, or at least uh, Kayan is. I mean, confessing uh, slash asking him out in front of everyone isn't exactly a human being move, but, uh... I don't know, uh... <laughs> at least she's being direct about it. This isn't some going to be some old big wacky misunderstanding. Maybe my mind had tried to avoid understanding her confession. That very moment, everything she had said and done from the day we met connected in my mind and I felt my face turn hot. If that was true, if what she said was true... Rumi sound I... Hey, Kanchan. <laughs> now is not the time to be interrupting, Togi. I fucking love this bitch, eh? This is me. This is... Togi-chan is me. Everything Togi-chan says and does is me. Togi-chan said in a cold, low voice. Do you realize if that was the change that occurred in you, you'd have to throw away that away to fix IMA? Whoa. Is that all right with you? If you let your mouth run without thinking about the consequences, you're the one that's going to be hurt in the end, you know. Rumi-san widened her eyes, as if she just realized what she had done. I... I never meant to... Mayuzumi-san, you're just being mean. What? Why are you pretending to be so calm about it? Then I'll ask you. What were you going to talk about if you had been the first to speak up, Xian-chan? I... I... Isn't that mean of you? Berating me and pretending you weren't going to do the same? You were going to be just as unfair as Kan chan Boy, do you know what's happening? Why all this is happening right now? There was no way I could get it wrong now. Togi-san was definitely attacking me now. And I didn't have an excuse. Ah, all right, stop it. It was so obvious what was going on with Kan chan and Yuto, wasn't it? You all knew. Why act as if you didn't notice and cause all the drama now? Puma shouted, as if he couldn't stand it anymore. But nobody nodded their heads in agreement. Do you mean I'm the only one that noticed? I, I think so, yes. Kan chan and Yuta? You mean you two didn't notice it either? I know it's not my place to answer. I think they didn't either. Puma let out a deep sigh, as if it were the end of the world, after studying our clueless faces. Okay, I should have known. That's how you guys are. 
So, now that we all know, can we just call it a day for now? Now that this has happened, we can't really sit and have a meeting, can we? You're right. Sorry, Fumakun. I should be the one that pulls things together. Yeah, I can admit this isn't a very calm situation. Fuma was saying, All of you, get yourself together and don't come back till you do. In the nicest way possible. To me, it was a convenient exit, but I had to admit, it was the best way to aver avoid further conflict. Sorry, Fuma. We'll have to go to the eat all you want another day. That's another weird thing. They've translated it all you can eat as eat all you want, which just is very clunky. I don't even feel like it anymore. Next time, just buy me a meal, okay? We quietly cleaned up the picnic and went home. That's it? Elope. Oh my gosh, elope. It was about 11 o'clock at night. But I'm going to take a quick break. That's the first hour down. And it is uh, like 110 degrees in my room at the moment. So I'm just going to go get some fresh air, have a drink, and just, I don't know, try and collect my thoughts about everything that just happened. So we'll be back in, uh, let's say, five minutes. Okay. See you then. Okay, and we're back. Gosh, it is getting so hot in here. I've left uh, my door open, so if there's more noise pollution than normal, that's because uh, I'd probably pass out if I didn't. The chances of anything coming from Mars are a million to one, he said. The chances of anything coming from Mars are a million to one, but still they come. You're shivering in your jumper? Well, that's that's the way the um world turns. It's how the tilt of the Earth's axis works out, uh, isn't it? Okay. It was about eleven o'clock at night. I tried going to sleep, but I couldn't despite the tiredness that weighed down upon me. I didn't give Kurumi-san her answer. I recalled what she said and relived the moment after and tossed and turned in bed. What the hell are we like tossing and turning for? Just tell her you love her. I, don't we love her? I don't... She seems nice enough. At the very least we could give things a shot. Or, or are we... I don't know, are we, do we have feelings for the other girl? Hey, Sun Gets, good to see you. How's your uh, Saturday going? Or it might even be Friday still for you. But how's your week been? I hope you're ready for some uh, cringe. You're gonna call it now. Now that she can bet, uh, she's gonna die or something. Oh, oh, Leonic, that sounds so right. Oh, she's gonna disappear or something. I don't know if we're, this is gonna get that dark that people are gonna start dying. Although I do think that there's, there might be time travel coming up. You know, that's what I'm holding out hope for, fingers crossed. So maybe, maybe it is possible she'll die, but then we'll go back in time to save her or something. Or, been all right, keeping warm? Okay, and like I said, I, I'm sweating over here. Uh, I've had to open, open the door up and stuff so I don't pass out. It's getting so hot in uh, this room. Um... But, or oh, oh, Leonic, uh, the other possibility is she stops being part of the IMA in-group and forgets us. That could happen as well. What's this here? What are you sending me? Soupy? Uh, it is a gnome? Surveillance camera image? I mean, it's not just a gnome. It seems to be a surveillance image. But I'm looking at that gnome. That's like the, taking all my focus. That's your back garden. Okay, so that's your gnome in the back garden there, by that chair? Because, like, it's looking right at me in this picture. Also, am I seeing, like, a lamb back there? Between, like, the bushes? 
looks kind of like a lamb looking at me over its shoulder. Your mum likes gnomes. Oh, okay. There's a lot of possibilities of, for a twist, and none of them are good, probably. Ah, uh, I'm, well, I'm... Now, now you I mean, now you've said that, that's absolutely like a death flag. Admit, confessing your feelings openly, like a normal human being, definitely a death flag, Leonic. You are absolutely right there. It's a solid, uh, head rock lamb. Ah, okay. Okay, so I'm not crazy, because it could have been like just like a weird optical illusion of like the bushes or something. But no, that, that definitely is a lamb looking at me. Okay, back to the game. I recall what she said, and relived the moment after, and tossed and turned in bed. I didn't experience much drama in my teenage years, and now my inexperience was haunting me. Uh, I don't know. I feel like experiencing drama in your teenage years just makes you more likely to seek out drama in your uh, adult years, honestly. Uh, it certainly hasn't um, prevented me from experiencing more drama. Yeah, but the point is, it's very cold, uh, but then it's winter here and summer for you, yeah. It's also just like a really bad time of day, honestly, uh, for me, like, afternoon is when my room gets the hottest. Actually, my room is probably the hottest in the entire house, but like, afternoon is when it really gets bad here, in just this particular room. Ah, what am I supposed to do? I yelled, but yelled in my pillow so I wouldn't disturb the others in the dorm. I, I was such a pussy. <laughs> I don't know why, but I really was expecting that, um, that kind of a uh, language from this game. I don't know. It uh, seems unnecessary, that kind of toxic masculinity, but okay. Then my phone buzzed. It was an email from someone that I was hoping would call, or should I say, hoping wouldn't call, KN Kurumi. I guess you couldn't sleep too, huh? Kurumi-san smiled shyly when I got to Central Park to meet her. You never expect a VN to break out pussy. <laughs> okay, it's night time. It's romantic. She's confessed her feelings. Leonic, I've... Oh, man. I I'm really worried now. You're absolutely right that something's gonna... Something bad's gonna happen to her. Either, like, she's gonna, like, die horribly in front of our eyes, or this is gonna be, like, the last time we ever see her ag again. Kurumi-san smiled shyly when I got to Central Park to meet her. Or did I wake you up with my email? Sorry if I did. Are you angry because I asked you out so late at night? I kind of understand why Togi-san said you were unfair. Oh... Does that mean you're angry after all? If I were, I wouldn't be here. You're right, I couldn't get to sleep either. I began to walk, following the yellow caution tape that Red kept keep out. Kurumi-san walked by my side, and we began our late night stroll. Aren't you going to ask why I asked you out? If I do, and, you'd, and you've and you done what you came for, I'd have to go back to the dorm and spend a troubled night there alone. So I thought it was better to extend my time with you. You're the one that's unfair, Yukun. You always say the most unexpected things when we're alone. Now that you've said that, it makes me... It makes me hard? <laughs> now that you've said that, it... It makes it hard to ask for your answer after what you've said this afternoon. After what I've said this afternoon. Really? The fact I'm here with you is an answer in itself, isn't it? Hmm... Kayan chans pretty spoiled, so she'd like to have something more definite. Although, I understand it's you. I can't expect much, can I? Wait, how dare you? I can be pretty forward when I want to be. I retorted to her jab, but I hadn't decided what to do yet. So I simply took her hand in mine and began to walk. The 
pathetic, I know. But it, that was the best I could do. This wasn't what I expected, but... Harumi-san whispered after a stretch of silence. My heart is beating a lot faster than I'd imagined. I have your approval, then? Almost. Here. Harumi-san hooked her arm around mine and pressed herself against me. Good, good. You aren't running away. <laughs> yeah, this is getting way too happy and lovey-dovey. Something terrible is about to happen. You can. You look nervous. Am I the only one happy about this? No, no, you're not alone. I just am nervous, that's all. Because I was feeling how soft she was, and she smelled so good. Let's stay this way then, till you get used to this. We might wander around to a old and rink it. Let me try that sentence again. We might wander around till we're old and wrinkly. Is that alright with you? Wait. Uh, oh. We might wander around till we're old and wrinkly. Is that alright with you? Hmm. I think that could be a bright future. Rumi-san said happily, and held on to me even tighter. Hey, don't tell me you've already gotten used to this. No, no, I haven't. Why? Because you're smiling. I tried to make a straight face. She giggled. If only we could stay this way forever. Togi-chan is going to be so mad. Togi-san just teases me because it entertains her. If we explain that we're serious, I'm sure she'd understand. Is that what you think? After what you saw this afternoon? Wow, you're super dense. I'd like everyone in Bertha's Night to acknowledge us as a couple, you know? But I also feel like we won't be accepted back in the herd. I'm scared. I'm afraid I'll never be friends with everyone again. Am I asking for too much? I want you, but I want my friends too. And so do I. And I want to believe our friendship isn't something so shallow it could break because of this. You feel the same? I thought so. I guess... The problem is that I don't have enough courage. Because I wasn't straightforward enough. Everyone got hurt. So, you can... Why don't you pretend you're eloping with me? Eloping? Yeah, we'll pretend we elope together. If we really do run away, we'd never be able to make friends with anyone, e with everyone again. If we really do run away, we'd never be able to make friends with everyone again. But let's pretend, just for now. Just because I want to feel like you're all mine, even if it's just for a little while. Besides, I have a feeling that we can get over this once we leave this town. There are so many people that I want to see. Just seeing them would give me courage. If my theory is right, IMA won't spread even if we leave this area. People that remember us now won't forget us. S Sungats, you're pushing a lot. Don't make me. Sorry, Soupy Doorman. You got in the way. Are you coming with me? Sure. I've got people I want to see, too. Phew. I'm glad you agree. I can't elope alone. It would be... a condolence trip? But I thought we can't get out of the restricted area. It's okay. Chi-chan taught me to get in and out. You can praise me if you want to. <laughs> Good girl. That's it? You could pet me on the head if you want to, you know. Uh, no thanks. Why not? No one's looking. 
you've got the right to do so. And I've got the right to ask for it, don't I? Here. She let go of my arm and faced me. I didn't have a choice. Well, I was going to pretend I didn't have a choice. I stretched my hand out and carefully threaded my fingers through her hair. Her hair was soft. I stroked her head a few times, and she closed her eyes as if she enjoyed it. Now we're petting her like a dog. It was like petting a cat. Is she a cat then? But she's got her hair looks more like big dog ears than cat ears. I almost imagined she was purring, but I was sure she'd get angry if I decided to scratch under her chin. Thanks. I feel so much better now. Hehe. <laughs> okay, let's go. Go where? We're going to pretend we elope, remember? We can catch the last TX train to Aki... Akihabara now. Now? But we haven't made preparations. We're eloping, so we don't need preparations. Let's do it now. It's a lot more authentic if we just do it on the spot. Authentic? If we're going to pretend, we might as well do it right. Harumi san looked determined. Besides, I was prepared to do this from the start. From what I saw, she wasn't carrying any luggage and didn't look any different from any other day. But I was sure she would deny it if I pointed it out. All right, if you want to, why not? I could secretly contact everyone tomorrow morning when Kurumi-san wasn't looking. They would be worried about us. There were only a few people on the last train to Akihabara. Akihabara? That's definitely not correct. Uh... Why can I not pronounce this name? I know the name, I know where they're going, I know how to pronounce it, but for some reason the word is not coming out correctly. Let's, let's break this down. Aki Habara. Aki Habara. No, that's not right. I'm definitely putting the emphasis on the wrong syllables. In fact, the cabin we were in was completely empty. Wow, it's like this cabin is reserved just for us. Kurumi-san sat down happily as the Tsukuba Express departed. There was a lot of space, but we sat closely, side by side. Wait, 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 wait. Does that mean she showed us how to get in and out of the restricted area? But we didn't actually find out how it happens? Like, she, she, she brought us along, but we didn't, like the player, didn't see. We watched the scenery of Science City flash by as we emerged from underground. There were several mansions in Science City that still had their lights on. They twinkled like stars against the backdrop of the city skyline. The tall buildings looked so out of place standing on the vast flat land. The way the lights glow warm yellow reminds me of honey. Doesn't it make you imagine that the mansions are like a beehive? Now that she mentioned it, I began to imagine it too. Each little room is filled with happiness, sadness, memories, all stacked one upon the uh, each other, like a honeycomb. I bet the families living inside aren't conscious about their lives, about the lives their neighbors live above and below them. Isn't it strange when you think of it that way? Even if IMA didn't exist, one thin wall separates one herd from another, and most of them would probably spend their lives without ever crossing paths. Rumi-san, did you grow up in a large house? How did you know? Because if you lived in a normal mansion like that, I don't think you'd comment on it that way. A normal mansion? I don't know if that's a translation error or what. Like, normal and mansion, at least in my world, don't go together. Good point. My home isn't just a big house, it's a farm. Kurumi-san, why don't you tell me more about yourself? Like, how you were as a kid, that sort of thing. <laughs> Just a very normal mansion, like every normal childhood. Exactly. About me? Heian-chan would rather hear about you, Ken. I'll tell you on the way back. How about that? Okay. Well, I guess I'll start from my home. 
The area around my home is mostly rice fields. There's a large agune in the middle of the rice paddies. And a little way down is where my house is. You want to build a normal mansion? Uh, what is agune? Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for asking, Yuta. What's in agune? Um, it's like a forest that protects the home from wind and rain. Like I said, if everything around is just rice fields, the house doesn't get much protection from the weather. They grow these forests so the strong winds don't blow through. I didn't know that. In the older days, they would have cut down the agune and used the wood to build a new house. Whenever they had to renovate, it was useful. The trees go pretty high, so the shade is cool and comfortable. In the summer, the cicadas would sing when the sun went down. It was my favorite spot to be in when I was alone. I can't imagine you being alone, Kurumi-san. There weren't many children around, and school was far away. Even the closest neighbor was far away. It was about 1.5 kilometers to the next house, where another child lived, four kilometers to school. It was an adventure just getting there and back. Rumi san laughed. There were more boys than girls, but like all children, we were different. They wouldn't invite me to play baseball or soccer with them. I wasn't very good at playing games either, so it was quite often that I had to spend the day alone. On those days, i bring my spade with me and go search the neighborhood. I'd spend hours, and before I knew it, the day would be over. I wished I was there with her, as a child, running through the fields. Although, since I was always an indoor sort of person, I doubted I could catch up with her. At that time, I had short hair and dressed like a boy, too. I really can't imagine that. <laughs> I'll show you some pictures the next time. Since when did you change? I guess around high school. The boys wouldn't become just friends anymore, so I sort of became like a girl. But since it's the countryside, I really stood out when I tried to be fashionable. The people that knew me would laugh. They'd tease me, saying, Look, a dress is wearing Kurumi-san's kid. I surmise that Kurumi-san was who she was because she didn't stop wearing what she loved despite the teasing. Right now, she definitely owned her sense of style. I think you look great. <laughs> Thanks. I'd hoped I would be tall and slender like Togi-san, so I'd look good wearing anything. But kayan chan grew in other places and didn't gain much height. She pressed her boobs together with her hands unabashedly, so I looked away to preserve her dignity. <laughs> Just call it her chest. We were trying to have a moment. I mean, don't even br don't even bring up her chest. But at the very least, don't call it, it her boobs. It's so childish. It's such a childish word to use when you were trying to be like emotional. The train stopped and the doors opened to a quiet platform. There were a few people that got off, but nobody got on. Remember the story I told you about how I quit collecting insects? I thought back to the time we had the conversation at the cafeteria. Of course, I wear pretty dresses because I like them, but there's also a meaning to the way I dress. It's my way of saying goodbye to my childhood self and reminding myself that I'm a woman. Now that I look back on it, I think I went through pretty large changes to separate myself from the herd. It's like metamorphosis, a crawly worm, a crawly worm, a crawly worm making a cocoon to turn into a butterfly. Uh, it's caterpillars, not worms that turn into butterflies, can? If everyone were here, I'm sure Togi-chan would have said something along the lines of, Boy, do you want to, me to help you become a real man? And Fukun would join in the teasing. Then Shi-chan would try and put them in their place. Rumi-san's impersonations were spot on, and I burst out laughing. Oh no! I shouldn't miss them already. Our journey has just begun. 
from what I've heard so far, I'm guessing you come from the Tohoku area, Kurumi-san. Yes, I do. Well done, detective. Kurumi-san, you said you wanted to see your family. Do you mean to go home right now? But of course. Kurumi-san replied surely. Once we get to Tokyo, we'll ride a bullet train. And once that's over, you can take me home to where you come from, too. I guess this is going to take a couple days. <laughs> it's our first date, and we're already spending the night together. Isn't it exciting? Um, yeah. First date, spending the night together. Also, um, it seems like you're going to be taking them to uh, meet your parents. Both of you. That's a, that's a hell of a first date. Oh, I could introduce you to my parents while we're at it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Stuff like that should be done spontaneously. W wait, isn't that rushing things a bit too much? Are you against it? We might be faking elopement, but what I feel is true. That's why I want to do this properly, instead of on a moment's whim. I want to make preparations and take the steps carefully. Is that not good? Hmm. You can... You're such a stiff guy. Although it does make me happy that you're taking it seriously. Alright. We'll take the steps carefully, as you say. But I... But can I request how we take the first step? To be honest, I was terrified because I didn't know what Kurumi-san would ask of me. But I nodded and agreed anyway. Can you call me by my name? Heian? I call you Yukin, but you call me Kurumi-san so formally. It feels strange. I'm younger than you, so it would be even more appropriate for me to call you by an honorific instead. I've called myself Kan chan so many times, hoping you'd catch on. But you never did. Was that why she did that? I thought it was just a habit of hers. Kurumi-san, I might be older than you, but you've been in Tsukuba longer than I have. Besides, it doesn't really matter much, does it, once we're in college? The value one puts in a year differs so much by then. You can... Is that why you speak to Togi-san so formally, despite the fact you are both the same age? Yeah, I guess. You called me Kurumi-san again, too. She glared at me. Then, can I make a request, too? You're making a deal? You can. You're quite a businessman, aren't you? I'm not going to ask you for anything extreme. I was just going to say... You could stop being so polite when we're alone. You can relax and just be yourself. I see. Although, I don't think I was being that polite. It's not like I was trying to behave because you're here. I have my own reasons why I'm careful with my speech. Really? What kind of reason? It's because if I don't pay extra attention to my speech, I'd start speaking in my own dialect. It's embarrassing. You mean you learned how to speak the way you do after you moved here? Yes. I practiced hard during the spring holidays after I graduated from high school. Well then, shall we practice our promise a little? Why not? You start first. She looked eager, so I coughed once and started. <laughs> okay, Unchan. This is something that really, I feel like, Never translates, but it's clearly something so integral to Japanese society. Like, what you call each other. Very strange. Like, we just don't have anything that comes close to the importance that, uh, at least in anime, uh, seems so vital. What's up, Yukon? Huh. <laughs> this is so not us. We could slowly get used to it. We'll change slowly, in time. Then we'll make a herd of our own. Just the two of us. Oh, I like the way you think. Rumi-san said, and she leaned her head against my shoulder. After that, we quietly watched the landscape go by. Yeah, anime visual novels do this a lot. Big part of the culture, yeah. There were no words, but we still felt connected. 
That I was sure of. I wondered how much time had passed. I suddenly felt something was wrong. Oh boy, here we go. Which leads reading them in English to be kind of weird, but also a nice glimpse into another culture. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just weird that there's like nothing that e comes ne anywhere near as close in uh, Western culture. Kurumi-san, do you remember when was the last time the train stopped? Hmm? I guess it was about 20 minutes ago. Is this an express train? No, I think it's supposed to stop at every station. If that were true, it was unusual that the train didn't stop once. There wasn't even an announcement as to when we would be arriving at the next station. Where are we now? I looked up at the display by the door. Usually, there would have been a screen that showed where the train was running through now, and which station it would stop next. Except, this time, there was nothing at all. The panel was turned off, and the screen was black. Maybe it's broken. I'll go check the other cabins. I stood up, when Kurumi-san grabbed hold of my sleeve. What's wrong? Everything. I have a bad feeling about this. Can I come with you? I nodded, and she got up too. The next cabin was empty, and the screen was black there too. We slowly made our way to the cabins in the back, going the opposite direction the train was moving. But the cabin after that, and the cabin after that, were all the same. They were empty, with a black screen. As we made our way through the cabins, the train never stopped, and never passed a station. It simply ran through the night. Then, a question popped into my mind. How many cabins did the Tsukuba Express have? Which cabin did we get on? Which cabin were we in now? I looked through the connecting door, and the cabins went on endlessly. I had never counted how many cabins the Tsukuba Express had before, but I was sure we didn't get on the ones in front. We'd already walked through five cabins, and there were more in front of us. That meant... Rumi san let's run. She nodded, and I took her hand. We ran towards the pack, hoping to reach the last cabin. We ran past several doors, through the empty cabins, but... <sighs> this can't be, Yukon. I counted as we ran through the cabins. But we've already run through ten of them. I took out my phone and left it on a seat. Yukon, what are you doing? I need to test this out. Can you walk with me a little more? What I'm doing might seem stupid, but we have to try it out, just to be sure. All right, let's go. The roomie san wrapped herself around my arm. She was scared. We began to walk. We were walking through a cabin with box seats, before people could face one another. The next cabin had its seats lined up against the walls. Then, after that, another cabin with box seats. I headed to the second box seat on the right, counting from the front. My heart was beating rapidly. I peered in. It's there! I dropped down on the seat in shock and picked up the phone. With the same design, same home screen, with the same data inside, it was definitely my phone. You can, you can. Let's go back and check the other cabin. We walked back as Kurumi-san had suggested. There wasn't a phone there where I had placed it. Of course there wasn't. The phone was now in my pocket. Kurumi -chan. Kurumi san can you pinch my cheek, please? Funny. I was just about to ask you the same. We sat down on the box seat and pinched each other. Ow. It doesn't hurt at all, you can. You're being too gentle. Well, it hurt for me, so I guess we can safely say this isn't a dream. Maybe it's my dream. Stop it. I have to start thinking. Then who am I? Who thinks as an individual now? Let's avoid bringing up a new philosophical question. He, <laughs> sorry. Rumi san giggled softly, and then pinched her own cheek. Yeah, it hurts. We're in a loop. Looks like we're stuck here. I wonder when it'll stop. Hey, I was about to ask that question. Of course, there was nobody there to answer that question. 
The sound of the train wheels grating against the tracks filled the silence. Hang on, I'm gonna have to take a drink. Actually, I'm gonna have to take another quick break, uh, just to make sure I don't pass out. Because it's only getting hotter and hotter as the day wears on. So, another quick break. We'll be back in five minutes. See you then. Okay, and we're back. Whew. I hope everyone's had a, a good break, got up and stretched. Had a chance to warm up and uh, cool down. Whichever you uh, prefer, depending on which side of the world you live on. Hope you're all staying hydrated up there. And of course, I hope you all had a chance to uh, go to the bathroom and... Uh, Drain the pee pee! As it were. Okay, so, of course, there was nobody there to answer that question. The sound of the train wheels grating against the tracks filled the silence. Okay, hang on. Dot, dot, dot. Utah. Dan. Do you think we're going to stay like this together? It's a possibility. Maybe this is a punishment for me. Because I tried to pretend to elope with you. Because I tried to be selfish and have you all to myself. And for me, trying to have you all to myself, too. This might sound terrible to you, but to be honest, I don't really mind this situation so much. We aren't going to get anywhere, and we aren't going back. I guess this is a real elopement. Nobody's gonna get in our way. We don't have to make excuses, and we can be together forever. The way I feel will be preserved in a box made of iron and glass, to be kept for eternity without ever fading. Um, yeah, does this uh, box full of iron and glass have, you know, food or, you know, a bathroom? Because uh, that's gonna become a problem uh, eventually. There's only one thing I'm afraid of. Am I the only one that feels this way? You aren't. I love you, Kurumi-san. I said it. I thought I wouldn't need courage to say it, but it came out surprisingly easily. Surprisingly easily. I'm not sure if I'd accept that if I was an editor. I'd probably want that changed to surprisingly easy. Kurumi-san looked relieved. She smiled and raised a hand toward the ribbon around her neck. She pulled it loose and tied it to my left wrist. Oh, look at that. That comes off in everything. What's this? It's a symbol of our bonding. Now that we're in a place where reality isn't definite, isn't it reassuring to see something that you're sure of? I suppose that's true. Thanks, Kurumi-san. <laughs> if we stay put and wait, do you think this train will stop at some point? What if it doesn't? If it doesn't, we'll think about it then. We're not in a rush anyway. If we take a nap and nothing changes, let's apologize to everyone and ask for help. So, you can. Can I sleep on your shoulder? You can. But it might be a bit hard to serve as a pillow. It's alright. It's the best place to be, for me. Kurumi-san declared, and rested her head against my shoulder. She was warm and soft. My eyelids grew heavy. I heard her snoring softly. Before I knew it, I had fallen asleep too. While I dozed, I felt the train come to a halt. Only my ears were awake. I couldn't move a muscle. Okay. 
What station were we at? There was no announcement. Only the bell sounded, and the door opened. There was the sound of two footsteps entering the cabin. I could hear that conversation. Expressionless voice. This is unexpected. According to Laplace, they would never have left Tsukuba. Okay, so Laplace was like the computer program or the app that can predict the future with some level of certainty. Apparently it was more like a uh, predicting like weather, like so it wasn't like 100% all the time, but... That is interesting. Because it means that like, I don't know, that our love for one another somehow... Like, wasn't able to be predicted by Laplace? Funny, isn't it? So, what are you going to do? I'll have to start over from the beginning, if I was to perfect this system. That is, if you would allow me to, being the referee. I don't mind. You call me a referee, but I can't say that I'm unbiased. Resetting everything would be convenient for you, but it would also be, but it would also be detrimental to your plans. Taking that to consideration, of course, I would say yes, don't you think? You just wait, Mitsuru Sanzim Non. Things will never turn out the way you want it to be. Mitsuru Sanzenon. Sanzenon? Okay, we've got a name for someone behind all of this. I shall be victorious. The voices came near. I could feel their presence standing right in front of us. Where were we? Let us get off. But I couldn't speak. The train began to run again, and I fell into slumber. The alarm clock went off. It was deafening, and I slept it with a hand to turn it off. I rubbed my sleepy eyes so I could focus. Rumi san I looked around to find her, but she wasn't there. I was back in, back in my room at the dorm. I had to find my phone. I had to see if she was all right. I looked at the screen, and my mind went blank. The calendar said it was May. May this year. We got on the Sukuba Express at the end of summer. Perhaps it was a mi Let me try that again. Perhaps this was a mistake. I opened my laptop and connected it to the internet. The date remained unchanged. I had gone back in time. Called it. Time travel. Yes! So, I guess that was the end of that. That's, like, love story. So that's all going to be reset. Because I'm willing to bet, um, Kayan doesn't remember any of this either. Like, everyone else's memories except for ours are going to be reset as well. Just like how we're the only ones who remember the robot girl. We're also going to be the only ones who remember that alternate timeline. But we checked. That wasn't a dream. I gritted my teeth and rubbed my cheek where Kurumi-san had pinched me. Something pink fluttered around my wrist. It was the ribbon Kurumi-san had tied there to prove our bonding. I felt myself calm down as I held the ribbon in my hand. I had to head to Hirasuna, where Bertha's knight would be waiting. If my mind served me correctly, this was the day we were supposed to hold a meeting. Oh, wow. So is this the meeting where we chased Kurumi-san from afterwards? Like, after the meeting went bad, we decided... Okay, hang on. Okay. Gosh, it was a while back. Several streams back, honestly. Oh, sorry. In fact, I think that's where we ended, um, the very first stream we did on this. So, gosh, that was, that was ages ago. It's gonna be hard to keep track of all this if we're gonna have to be remembering events from so many hours ago. Good morning, Kiriha-kun. It's unusual for, be, uh, for you to be here so early. Why the frown? Kozuki-san asked the moment she arrived. Kozuki-san, have you heard of Laplace before? No, I don't know about it. Does it have anything to do with IMA? Her answer weighed heavily on my heart. It meant she didn't remember anything that happened after this date. She didn't remember how we traced the perimeter, the time we went to the botanical garden, the picnic at Matsumi Park, 
No, it wasn't that she didn't remember. It all hadn't happened yet. Kiri Hakun, you're acting strange today. I didn't answer her. She simply shrugged. Hey, here I am, right on time. Hey, Yuda, what's the matter? You look as if you're bearing all the misfortunes of the world. Let me try that again. You look as if you're bearing all the misfortunes of the world. Boomer. I was about to ask him the same question I asked Kozuki-san, but I stopped. I knew his answer would be the same, and I would just get even more depressed. Morning? Hey, that's unusual. You mean I'm not the last? Hmm, I should have slept in more. Hey, Fumakun, can you tell me more about the apps? Kozuki-san leaned over towards Fuma. I'd seen all of this before. I should have said this the other day, but I think the apps could be something that would help us break through IMA. In fact, it might be something that could propel us forwards. Ah, I see. What do you mean, I see? Can you explain, Togi-chan-san? After this, Kurumi-san said, the door opened with a bang. Kurumi-san ran in, breathing hard. She was dressed just as usual, except that she wasn't wearing a ribbon around her neck. She leaned against the door, opening and closing her mouth silently, as if she wasn't sure how to ask her question. I lifted my left arm to show her ribbon and smiled. You can! You can! She burst out in tears and ran towards me to give up me a hug. I hugged her back tightly, just to make sure she existed and was real. I was... I was so... I was so scared! I thought, what if you didn't remember either? Oh, thank god, she does remember! Fucking hell! Okay. Okay, so we're, we're back in time, but we're still in love. I, I couldn't use my phone, I couldn't leave the house, but I had to do something, and I... I... <laughs> what about everyone else? I shook my head sideways, and Kurumi-san's eyes welled up with fresh tears. They spilled over and rolled down her cheeks. I'm so sorry, everyone. I'm sorry. It's all my fault. It's all my... Wah. Oh, dear. Uh, Kurumi-san, don't cry. Please don't cry. You have to calm down and talk, or else we'll never understand what you're trying to say. Wah. What? Hey, hey Kanchan, are, are you alright? Hmm, I wonder what's wrong. Maybe she had a bad dream. Rumi sounds alright. Sorry, everyone. Can you all just stay by our side for a while without asking any questions yet? I said it on behalf of Rumi san, but in truth, I needed some quiet too. Well, there are days when people have to cry. Come here, Kayan chan Miss Togi will treat you real good. T Togi chan I'm sorry. I, I, I won't be bad anymore. I won't. Hirumi-san kept on apologizing, and Togi-san cuddled her closely. I, I tears. My snot's gonna get all over you. Shh. It's okay. Don't worry about it, Kayan chan it's yours. I don't mind at all. Come on. Come to Mama. Kurumi-san clung tight, clung onto Togi-chan and cried. Kozuki-san stroked her head and smiled despite looking confused. Kurumi-san gradually calmed down. The sobs turned into sniffles. <laughs> Yuta, if you have to, you can come to Daddy for a hug. Why are you spreading your arms invitingly, Fuma? Uh, because you look like you want to cry too. Although, I have no idea what happened. Was I so obvious? I guess I was. But I'm alright, thanks. I'm sure everything will be fine. I just know we can do this all over again. No matter how far we are, no matter how differently things turn out, we'll always be able to return to the herd. Now that I knew what would happen in summer, and now that I knew how Kurumi-san felt about me, I was on a different level of awareness from Kozuki-san, Togi-san, and Fuma. But Bertha's nights. To keep this herd together, 
I knew that I was capable of doing anything. Someone had reset our time, but because of that, I was sure. No matter how many times the resetting would occur, our memories would always be there. Our battle had just begun. And we just got the achievement hello. What? What? Oh, don't treat me like that game. Making me think that that was gonna be like the closing credit. Wait, what is this? Is this closing credits? What are you do? Oh. <laughs> what is this? Trying to fake me out. I know that can't be the end. Game, what are you doing to me? <laughs> you did it, you won. Okay, looks like clicking can make the credits go faster. I see. Very rich, oh. Naomi Khan. Yoshi Soy. Somia. Come home, swallow. <laughs> Come, home swallow. We never piloted the Mecca Campus X. The end. Yeah, okay. I don't believe you, game. I don't believe that that's really the end. <laughs> you want us to what? Okay, so what, what do we click now? Start? Language? English, of course. Prologue. This is it, my goal. Hmm. Did I? Yeah, there's no, like, save I can load. Okay. So let's... Uh, where's the skip button? Oh, is this it? Oh no, that just makes it play. Where's the skip button? There was a skip button here before. I definitely know that there is, because I used it. Hang on, let me check the... Oh, skip mode is F. Okay. There we go. There's our sister. Oh, find something else. Um... Yeah, I, I think that was what we had to pick last time. Because, yeah, the, the, this was what made me first think that there was going to be time travel in this game. It was because uh, last time we had to click find something else as well. But the fact that there were these grayed out options made me think, are we going to get a chance to come back around and do these again? And we did get offered to be in a band um, at one point by the blonde haired lady who I gave the bad cigarette voice to. So I get the feeling we're going get, to get a chance to unlock that at some point. But I guess we'll pick find something else at the moment. Okay, here we are meeting the girls for the first time. Is Togi collapsing? And then, uh, yep, there's KN thinking that she's a dead body and then chasing down a break. Oh, and there's Robot Girl. And uh, she seems to be the, the cause of all our problems. Fireworks went off in my head. And now, here is where it all begins. Everyone forgetting us. I woke up in my room. Uh, I don't want that. I want... Uh, what is it? F? Okay, where... And here's our sister, having completely forgotten us. And then we somehow just managed to find everyone all at the same time. Okay, where do we make the next decision? Okay, now, this decision we make now. Uh... 
go home once and think about it. That is what uh, KN wanted, and that's what um, that that I feel like is what sent us on this storyline, like this whole getting to know KN and ending up falling in love with her. I'm getting the feeling that this was the decision that set us on that track. So, I think Togi is the one who wants us to keep the current situation. And then uh, Shion wants us to stay here and try and change the situation. So I guess we'll pick that this time around. I want my sister to remember me. Okay, achievement, fighter. I can't just hope someone else will fix the problem. I have to do as much as I can. R really? Kurumi san looked dis uh, disheartened and her shoulders sat. I felt a bit guilty. Um, sorry? No, it's not your fault, Yukon. Yeah, and John, you could just go home yourself if you want to see your family so badly. We're just people who happen to be in the same boat. It doesn't mean you have to do the same as everyone else. Uh, you beat the game again? Yeah, well, I, I, I get the feeling that we're gonna have to do multiple story... We're gonna have to unlock the final storyline, I think, is what we're gonna have to do. We've gotta run multiple, um... Uh, different routes before we can get the true ending. Although, as I've said before, I wouldn't recommend it. Yes, I think about it a little. After that, we tried sorting out the facts to understand the situation as much as possible. So far, there wasn't very much else to add to what we already knew. Rumi-san never uttered a word after saying, I'll think about it, but simply stared blankly out the window. I think we've had enough discussion. Let's call it a day. Let's meet up after class tomorrow. Kozuki-san clapped her hands, and we all left the Hirasuna Community Center. Koi. Oh, okay, so it seems like we're going to still have the same basic storyline. So, what now? If you're all free, why don't we all go out to dinner? Uma asked as he pulled out his bicycle from the cluttered parking area. I don't mind. Um, sorry, but no thanks. I got something to do by the train station. Oh, okay. See you tomorrow, Kurumi-san. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Kurumi-san waved at us cheerfully and rode off on her bicycle in the direction of Kazuka. She's faking it. Yes, she's faking it. Togi-chan-san, I think you should apologize later. Hmm? I thought I was being helpful, but did I do the wrong thing? I guess I did. Uh... Togi-san pressed her hand to her forehead as if in deep thought. After a while, she slapped me on the shoulder. I'm terrible at things like that. Nope. No. I'm leaving it to you, boy. Tell her I said sorry, okay? Yep, this is basically how it went the first time around. Yeah, they're all pushing me into doing it. Guess we aren't getting dinner after all. Am I going to chase uh, down Kurumi-san and throw bed to the koi in the lake? Two fluffy ponytails. Sad bread. Uh, why would she start eating handmade bread at such a place at such a time? I thought about this and chewed on the dry piece of bread. I tried swallowing it and choked. You want some tea? She handed me a water bottle, and I fished the contents of it quickly. You, thanks. I thought I'd die there. Hey, you can you drank everything. That was all I had. Oh, sorry. I'm just kidding. 
you seem pretty all right. Of course I'm all right. But just now, never mind. It's just that Togi-san told me to tell you she's sorry. She didn't mean to be cruel. I told her, because I didn't have anything else to say. She didn't have to apologize. Oh yeah, and then we get this CG scene. Koi. And then we have a weird moment where we think about all the different meanings of koi. But of course, the she's just literally talking about the fish. Uh, is there an option to only skip the text you've only seen? Hang on, let's have a look. Um, skip all un... Wait, no, hang on. Skip red sentences. This is very weird. Okay, so for skip, if I turn it on, it skips all unread sentences. And if I turn it off, it skips red sentences. Okay, so I guess that's how it current how uh, skipping mode currently works. I think if I'm reading that correctly, I don't know. It's kind of weirdly set out, but so if I just hit skip mode, it'll skip everything until we hit some new text. In theory. Okay, and now this is where we ran into a blonde girl with the robot who ran off, but she left her phone behind. And by returning it to her a week later, we figure out that she remembers us after a week, and it, it creates this small sense of hope. And she also asks us to join a band. Um, what we did was we tried to call someone from its history, but that didn't work out. So I guess what we'll do now is bring it to the service office? I remembered someone telling me there was a service. Oh, and look, it stopped skipping now, so this because this is new text. I remembered someone telling me there was a service office in, in every faculty. Maybe I could just bring this phone there. Where was the service office? In the foreign language center, anyway. And we got achievement service office. I was familiar with the service office in the third cluster, but I didn't know where to go around this area. could bring the phone to the service office in the third cluster and tell them I found it here. But that was in the opposite direction of the Hirasuna Community Center. Hmm, what should I do? And so you just brought it here with you? Uh, yeah. Oh, look at the skull on it. Look how the front of its forehead protrudes a little. It must have been one intelligent thing in a previous life. It's a plastic toy. It doesn't have a previous life. Stop trampling on my dreams. I really want this skull. Togi-san toyed with the skull accessory. Okay, I remember this. these lines of dialogue, but... Go steal it. I'm not going to steal it. How rude. So, Boomakun, any update on the apps? It might be something that could get, uh, help us out of this situation, you know? Who knows? It could be the answer to everything. I see. Okay, this is the... Oh, so this was the conversation that we got... Uh, wandered into after we... went back in time. What do you mean, I see, Togi-chan-san? Are you... Are you saying it's a new similarity? So far, the only similarities we have with one another is that we're stuck in IMA and that we're all taking science-related subjects. Hmm. I don't even know if it has anything to do with IMA, but it might provide us uh, something that could propel us forward. Woo! The responsibility. Yeah, do your best, Fuma. You're gonna help too. Here. Up uh, here. What's this? Today's homework. And I also put in your slip for attendance. You didn't have to do that. Maybe you're okay with it, but I won't have you flunking this year. We're going to get things back to normal, right? It won't be so cool if things get back to normal and you fail this year, don't you think? Uma shrugged. It's fine if you don't want to attend class. I'll just take notes for you. How about that? You fix the, the apps, I take the notes. Fair deal? Yeah, fair deal. Let's do this. We high five. Hey, Xion-chan, Kian-chan. 
No. No. No sense of charity. And then the apps. Ringing a bicycle bell. Uh, Kisa. Yeah, this is all the same, I think. So if I hit F. And there she's again. She asked us to be in a band, but we turn her down. Who should I talk to? Uh, last time, I think we picked... Fuck, I can't remember. Who's Kozuki and which one's Kurumi? It's Kurumi KN and Kozuki is Grey Girl. Uh... I think we talked to Kurumi both times, so let's talk to Togi-san. Togi-san. Hmm? I was hoping you'd talk to me. I have... I had a feeling you were. Togi-san, what do you think about all, all the time? I wonder when you talk to me next. Something like that? Why are your ears turning pink? You've got to learn how to brush simple teasing away like that. Y yeah. Yogi san looked smug, and I dropped her gaze and dropped her gaze to her phone. Plus 22 seconds off time. I still need to work on this. What the hell does that mean? What? Nothing. I heard you. Yogi san's eyes began to swim. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, look, the prune is bending. Up front, it's curving to the north. Uma interrupted. We were a little way down, Higashi Uduri. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's go. Kurumi san ran in the direction Fumu was pointing without waiting for our response. As always, I was amazed at how far she could run in those shoes. Come on, let's follow her. I appreciate the enthusiasm, but you haven't even sped up a bit. I have, just can't tell. God. <clears throat> Toki, uh, Toki chan -san's, uh, voice is the first one to go. It's something about that deep, uh, campiness that is, like, the first one to, that begins to dry up on me as my voice, as my throat gets, uh, more worn out during the stream. It's a shrine? Looks like it. Okay, let's uh, see if we can skip through this. No, it's not going to let us. Okay, so this must be new stuff. Okay. Maybe there's something there. Let's go take a look. Aye, aye, sir. Wait, wait up. Togi-san grabbed hold of Kurumi-san's collar, preventing her from dashing off again. Ow, what do you think you're doing? What do you think you're doing? What do you think you're doing? That's what I was about to say. You were about to run straight through the middle. The middle is reserved for the guards. Us slowly humans must walk on the sides. I must spank bad girls like you. Spank? She wasn't a child anymore, although the picture was somewhat appealing. I remember this line from uh, last time. Fancy you speaking about manners. Uma grumbled as he walked under the Tory. Walking on the side of the path, we followed suit. And, Togi-san, who's big on manners, why aren't you coming? Hmm... I'll wait here. Don't worry about me. You all just go ahead. That's strange. Don't mind me. But she was usually such a clingy person. We haven't walked much yet, but are you tired? Come to think of it, you do look a bit pale. You're imagining it. Yeah, Togi-chan sounds always pale. Yep, what Fuma said. If you're fine, then let's go then. Kozuki-san and Kurumi-san have already gone in. N no Togi-san slapped my outstretched hand away as if to protect herself. I... Sorry. 
I wondered if I looked hurt. Togi-san apologized sincerely. What's the matter? You're behaving out of character. Yeah, okay, this seems all the same. But no, uh, hitting F doesn't do anything, it just continues on. So, okay, I guess there's something new that's gonna happen. Boy, I've got a favor to ask of you. If you hold my hand and say, come with me, maybe I can go with you. Uh, okay. Please, in exchange, I'll do anything you say once. Well, okay then, give me your hand. Huh, I don't remember getting this CG before last time. But uh, I do remember holding her hand. And me speculating that maybe this was another vampire thing. Like maybe she couldn't be on hello ground or um, she had to be invited in, you know, like vampires do. Yogi-san laced her fingers through mine. Her hand squeezed my hand tight. Her touch was slightly cool. From what I know, this was how lovers held hands. I don't remember that observation last time. Um, I have a feeling this isn't the appropriate way to... Her eyes wavered, and she trembled like a scared child. My protest died on my lips. She confused me. I couldn't tell whether she was acting or not. F Fuma, you go first, because this is embarrassing. Togi-san glared at Fuma, who was grinning from ear to ear at the spectacle. Of course I won't, Togi-chan-san. I have to watch this. It's too good to pass up. If you don't... don't... If you don't go quickly, I'll tell Xion Chan you think she has big hips. Uma left at the speed of a bullet. Boy, we are finally alone. Escort me gently, please, or I'll be very cross with you. All right, my lady, come with me. We ran through the Togi. To togi. <laughs> we ran through the Tori hand in hand. Togi san let go once we entered the ground safely and to turned towards me to smile. If you smile like that all the time, you wouldn't be called a waste of beauty. <laughs> Every time she says boy, you imagine it in Kratos' voice. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have a good uh, Kratos uh, impression I can do just off the top of my head. Um, yeah, this is a great line, basically telling her to, you should smile more often. Hmm, all right. I'll try to remember that, but... You'll have to help me out again, okay? Even if she forgot how to smile, I doubted I could ever forget how she looked and how she held my hand. Tracing the perimeter. After investigating Saiki Shrine, we walk north along uh, Higashi Odori. Okay, can we skip this? No, nothing much at the shrine. Hmm. I didn't... No, it's still set to skip red sentences. Now I'm pressing the right button. Okay. Wait, what was that? Uh, is that for now? That's fine with me. Uh, okay, let's go with that. Kiriakun, may I ask what you two were talking about just now? Um, just now? I glanced at Togi-san, and she pressed a finger to her lips. Yeah, it seems like we're, at the very least for this section, doing a lot of Togi. Even though I, I said uh, back at the beginning that we should... Maybe, okay, so maybe that first choice that I thought was the one that had set us on... Uh... Hand chance. Maybe that wasn't actually that important of a choice at all, because it seemed to lead just to the koi. Um, but we did get an achievement for doing that, so I don't know. But it does seem like we're focusing on Togi a bit at the moment. It's a secret. Kiriakun, a secret is made known that it is a secret the moment you say it is. It's like a decorated golden box. If you found something of that sort lying on the ground, wouldn't you want to open it? Even if the contents could be dangerous, it's human nature to be curious. 
So, Kiriakun, just tell us already. I assure you that would be better for your well being. Wh why me? Why didn't you ask Togi san instead? Because Mayusumi san is a good liar, and she hides things well. It won't be any fun to tease her. Wait, wait, are we trying to have fun with Yukun? I want to have fun with him too! It's a secret! Oh. Good liar? Maybe I was wrong about that. Before you make judgment, think about this. Hope was at the bottom of Pandora's box, and it was the hardest to take out. A happy outcome is never easy. You make it sound like those lucky bags in New Year. You only get one good item among many. It also sounds like those bundle deals. You get all sorts of extras you don't need with something that you might want to buy. Suddenly, Pandora's box doesn't sound so appealing anymore. Okay, Enchan, did you just mention you like bundle deals? Yeah, bundle with me, huggy huggy. Oh boy. Huh? What? Yogi-san latched onto Kurumi-san and began rubbing her cheek on her very, very vigorously, variously, and began rub rubbing her cheek on her vigorously. Th that's indecent. Now, please keep going. The trees on the sidewalks of Su Sukaba Uduri were tall. The way they lined up, tall and strong, along the straight road that seemed to go on endlessly, gave an illusion we were in a different country. Okay, I don't remember this happening. This whole face rubbing thing. It's strange how you don't notice when you're cycling through in a hurry, isn't it? We chatted about things like that as we walked through the vast campus, which stretched out north to south. We were reaching the north end soon. At this point, I, I seem to recall us having talked about crows, and then we were talking about how Noah from the Bible, like Noah from Noah's Ark, was an albino. So... Are we going to skip that conversation this time around? Because I'll be grateful if we do. I think the next bend is coming up soon. Ugh, my feet are killing me. Is it a shrine? Looks like it. Uh, the shrine lay just northeast of the campus. The trees in its vicinity weren't as tall as the Psyche Shrine, but we could see the stone Tori standing against the sun. Again, it took some gentle persuasion from the protesting Togi-san to come with us, taking her hand and pulling her along. We all entered the shrine together this time. Why don't we pay our respects again now that we're here? Again? You wouldn't know since you came late, but Gayan-chan was praying at the other shrine. I suppose it wouldn't hurt asking God for help. We don't know much about IMA yet. I nodded. Kurumi-san happily took out of her purse. I'm throwing in 15 yen for better relations. Better relations? I'm counting on you too. Come. Uh. Kamenus? Kamenus? I'm counting on you too, Kamenus. Kurumi san bowed towards the pair of Kamenu, uh, statues of the guardian dogs, before she threw her coins into the offertory box. She clapped her hands twice, according to custom. Xion Chan, you don't look like the type that believes in God. No, not true. I go pay my respects each new year. Really? That's unexpected. I didn't think you would believe in something you can't see. I guess you have exceptions too, huh, Xion Chan? It's not an exception. It's an extension of my beliefs. You only get to pray on the new year once every year. I take the opportunity to pray hard on one resolution I'm determined to keep for that year. If I believe in it strongly, it would happen, 
and it wouldn't matter whether there is a god or not, wouldn't it? I see. I guess that sounds right, coming from you. Hmm, I'm beginning to think I should pray too. Instead of praying something from God, why did you hurry up and make up your mind what you want to ask of me? I did promise I'd do anything for you, once. Huh? You were serious about it? I thought you just said that to get out of the situation then. What? N never mind then. Forget I said anything. I'll just make you do stuff for me for free. W wait! Imagine all the courage I had to muster up to make that promise. Give me back the time I spent in angst. How dare you toy with a young woman's feelings. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll think of something. I'll think about it. Um, you can. Togi-chan, you seemed kind of close ever since we left Psyche Shrine. You were holding hands just now, too. Kurumi-san peered into my face suspiciously. Ouch. I had walked behind everyone. Else, hoping they wouldn't notice. But I guess that didn't work. Nothing escaped Kurumi-san's eye. You can try to hide it, but you can't trick me. Um... Hey, look at this! It's pretty interesting. Uma yelled out. Everyone's attention went to the information board he was reading. I walked up to him and clapped a hand on his shoulder. Then I spoke in a low voice only he could hear. Thanks, man. You owe me one. What's this? The name Ichinoya, first arrow, comes from the legend of a warrior named Tomonaga. He used three arrows to hunt a three-legged bird. The first two arrows failed to hit the target. This land is said to be the place where the first arrow fell. I didn't know that was the origin of the name. Look, Brona bends here, towards southwest. That means we finally found our halfway point. You mean we still have half to go? I'm feeling faint. Togi-chan, Togi-chan, think of it as already halfway. Come on, chin up. The sun was already beginning to set. And now Kamanu Shrine. Away from Hikashi Odori, we walked the road that circled the campus. This road that led from the north to the west was named uh, Kaidi Dori, meaning Maple Street. Okay, and now we're, instead of talking more about uh, crows and albinos, it seems like we're now talking about Pandora's box this entire time. Or because we talked uh, turkey. So that's why none of this is skippable, is because it's not, it's kind of entangled with this, these conversations. It's kind of annoying. I wish they'd been a bit more specific as to which lines we could skip and which we can't. About Pandora's box, Togi-san suddenly said. The box comes out only in the beginning and the end of the story, right? And the important part was that inside there were terrible things. And lastly, there was hope. Why such a big deal about the box? I suppose it is kind of strange, come to think of it. A box is just a box. What's important is inside it, even for Christmas presents. Once the wrapping is torn and the inside taken out, the box is thrown away. Hey, I keep the boxes that come with my Christmas presents, and I didn't tear the wrapping. I carefully peeled it off. Chian chan did you reuse the boxes though? I bet you don't even remember where you put them by the time the next Christmas comes around. Um, well, I was a kid, you know. Um, nothing. I was simply trying to get back to that thing you were talking about. You know, about the box being a secret. If you know what the secret is, eventually you'd forget it was even a secret to begin with, wouldn't you? What do you even, what does that even mean? What if the important part of us are taken out somewhere and what's left of us is the box? What if that's why we were forgotten? The story's name is Pandora's Box. It wasn't called The Contents. True. I suppose that's the part that gives us hope. 
It's called Pandora's Box. People never forgot about the box. But isn't it called Pandora's Box because the girl that was given the box was called Pandora? Yes, that's how the Greek story goes. So, what's important isn't the box and what's inside, but the person that opened it and what happened to her, isn't it? This, this, uh, these pseudo-scientific uh, ramblings are just like... Uh, they're just baffling. I always feel like they've been like poorly translated, but I really don't think they have been because they're just utter gibberish. You mean to say it's important to find someone to open the box, right? That would be difficult with how IMA works, though. The next turn is coming up. Oh, and we got the achievement secret box. Does that mean we can start skipping again? Yes, we can. Emergency. Oh, this is the bug stuff. Uh, and last time we said that the IMA, which, uh, what would you call it, boy? Which would you prefer to tie you down? Uh, last time she's talking about IMA and how it binds us together. Uh, last time we said it's a bond, but this time let's call it a curse. It's a curse. And we got the achievement, it's a curse. Really? Why? I never expected you to see it that way. Because when you bond with someone, it's not supposed to tie you down. If I need to be tied down to something to prevent us from splitting apart, I'd rather that it be a curse. Because I don't want to believe that something as important as a bond would take away our freedom. Togi-san looked surprised and blinked, but she soon recovered her cool demeanor and smiled the way she always did. She put her hand on my head. Then she patted me gently. What's this? I'm showing some love because you're cute. Really? I'll tell you something. A bond is originally something that ties you down, you know? Like cattle. You're trying to say I'm so cute you want to eat me? If you take it that way, I might just eat you up. Rawr. Togi-san, did you have someone that hurt you too? Because they forgot you? I didn't play along with her, but asked her a serious question instead. Togi-san simply shrugged. <laughs> this is definitely how people talk to each other. Yes, of course it is. Uh, of course I did. Everyone does. Even me. Do you remember the second time you met me? Of course. It might be one of the most memorable days I've ever had in my life. You came out of a dawn saying, Why didn't anyone wake me? Togi-san, I didn't know you lived in the dorms. I don't. I live in an apartment. I was just staying with my friend at that time. Is your apartment far? No, it's nearby. Then why don't you go home and sleep there? Can't you imagine why, boy? I guess you probably can't. Togi-san looked at the dark road with slit eyes. I am A or not, I've always stared at the same scenery every day, boy. Alone. But now, you're right here before me. So to be honest, it might not be happy for you all, but this situation is actually a lot better for me, because I'm not as lonely. Xion Chan may have noticed that, that scary girl. Do you mean you want IMA to last forever, Togi-san? Is that what you want? No. Boy, the thing that hurts the most in this world is knowing your loved ones are in pain and not being able to do anything about it. Or else, why would I ever want to be a doctor? Hey, you don't have to look so surprised. That hurts. I, um, sorry. So, 
So now, are you ready to think about my proposition more seriously? She's referring to the how she said she'd do anything once uh, for us in return for holding her hand when we uh, went under the Tory. Uh, of course you'd bring up the topic again. You don't give up, do you? I could kiss you if you want. The kiss of death, vampire lady? No, I'm being serious. No, thank you, because I know you've just eaten a handful of bugs not so long ago. Do you mean you wouldn't have minded if I hadn't eaten the bugs? Ooh, someone's being suggestive. Togi-san poked me in the cheek with her finger. I think I've thought of something. Really? Okay. Wait a moment. Let me get ready for this. Three seconds, please. What happens if I hit skip? Yeah, okay, it'll skip through. I think we end up asking her not to call us boy, and then she ends up... And this is where uh, KN gets hit on by some guy. Uh, KN... Yeah, yeah, we get, uh, Kayan gets hit on by some guy, Turgi distracts him by throwing a can at his head. Uh, Yukun, are you thinking I should dress more- Yukun, are you thinking I should dress more conservatively so I don't draw attention? And, I don't remember what we picked last time, but knowing me, I can't imagine I would have picked anything other than no, because that's a fucking horrible thing to think. So, uh, let's go with yes, just for the sake of, um, having to pick different options. To be honest, I think so. But I suppose it's you, Kurumi-san. You'd look pretty no matter what you wear. Oh yeah, and we got the achievement, Be My Flower. You're saying that because you've never seen me wear anything drab before. People who- People whose looks depend on how they dress will stop being attractive when they change. People who are truly attracted to who you are won't care how you dress. Hmm. What's the matter? You're making a bit of face. What you said was so corny, like a pickup line. I don't know why, but when you say it, you don't sound like the other guys, and it doesn't sound cool. I don't know whether to take that as a compliment. It's not a compliment. I'd hope she'd say it was, even if it was a lie. To tell you the truth, what I said was what my sister told me as a reason not to spend money on fashion if I didn't want to. She always walks around in a suit, wherever she goes, because she knows she can go anywhere if she's in one. I told her maybe she should dress up once in a while, since she's beautiful after all, and she told me, only people that aren't confident need to depend on their exterior. She can't climb mountains in a suit, though. And you dig holes in the ground wearing what you do. Good point. So, maybe you won't get as much attention from unworthy suitors that are attracted to your superficial qualities if you dress differently. Just a thought. I like how you dress, though. I don't want to change the way I dress just to avoid them. I feel like I'm losing to them. I know I'm being childish, but... It's comforting being around you. I think Fukun knows how I detest those easy people. That's why he's careful around me. But you're sort of... natural. How should I put this? Wait, Yukun, are you gay? You know... How did I forget about that line? I mean, I remember being gobsmacked by this line the first time around, but somehow I managed to forget that this was coming up again. <sighs> Fucking anime. No, I'm not. Then how come you don't feel the same attraction as other guys do? I know I sound so full of myself when I say that. Hey, what's wrong? What's that face for? Nothing. I just remembered Togi-san saying something similar yesterday. Kurumi-san? You just made an evil face. What was that about? Huh? <laughs> Nothing. 
What? You must be seeing things. Okay. Speaking of Togi-san, she's the reason why I came to meet you today. We thought, maybe we all need to speak with Kozuki-san properly. Yeah. Chi-chan looks like she's trying to handle everything herself. I'm worried. Exactly. I think Kozuki-san has a theory she's keeping from us. I don't know why she won't talk about it, but it's worrying that because of it, she's doing everything alone. Togi-san has a few thoughts of her own, too. I thought we should hold a meeting to discuss what we think about IMA. And what we want to do about IMA. What we want to do? What do you think? Yukun! Yukun! I got a place I want to go to, with everybody! It's the Tsukuba Botanical Garden, right next to the Tsukuba Campus. But can we all go together when we investigate the rest of the perimeter? I spoke with Togi-chan before, and we agreed it was the place we'd want to visit. Oh, I, sp we spoke, I spoke with Togi-chan before, and we agreed it was the place I want to visit. No wonder Togi-chan uh, told me to see Kurumi-san before I talked to Kozuki-san. I've got something to show everyone, and I bet the greenery will, greenery will provide us a good environment to relax and chat in. What do you want to show us? <laughs> it's a secret! We're all going to talk about our secrets, right? I just told you my secret about how I feel, so I'm going to keep this one till that day. <laughs> how about it? Let's have a meeting at the Botanical Garden. Alright, why not? Yay! Okay, okay. Shall I go tell Shichan about the plan? No, it's alright. I'll ask her myself. Hmm. Is it because you want to be alone with her? No, that's not what I... I was just kidding. Good luck trying to catch her. It's gonna be pretty hard. I'll have to warn you. That was so convincing. Cor convinced. That was so convincing, considering Kurumi-san's experience. And then, I noticed people quarreling at the exit of the cafeteria. I wondered whether it was that man again. Uh-huh. No way, man. Where's the source? There's no way a system like that could be made so easily. Oh, this is about... This is where we first hear about Laplace. I'm positive that it's true. I can t can't tell you where I got the information, but the leak is legit. It came with a price, but this isn't just a rumor. I don't believe you. Use your common sense. There's no way that's possible. You can tell what grades you'll get even for the, for the subject you take it with this system? Come on. It's true, it's not. The two kept quarreling as they cut across the cafeteria and headed to class. I wonder what that was about. Rumi-san and I looked at each other and shrugged. Xion and two sheets of paper. Okay. Are you two on a date? Alright. Okay, I remember this. There's like a child that gets lost from a, a, a group, like a kindergarten group. Uh, and last time we said unfortunately no, and that seemed to upset uh, Xion. But this time we'll say yeah. Yeah, yeah we are. <laughs> I glanced at Kozuki-san as I replied, and we just got the achievement on a date. If you're going to say that with fear that I will reject you, why try to look good in the first place? <laughs> uh, sorry, tried to pull a fast one. Are you angry? If you don't declare that with more confidence next time, I will be. I'll remember that. Uh, wait, next time? I asked, but Kozuki-san had already squatted in front of the small boy. Sorry to disappoint you, but we aren't on a date. Not today. He was just kidding. Okay. Good luck, then. Good luck. Good luck. I received cheers from the little kids walking past. Good luck with what, exactly? Come on, children. Let's go. Sorry to intrude you two. Have fun. The teacher in charge took the children away, giving us a lukewarm smile. It looked like she had the wrong idea, too. I found myself thinking, that wasn't so bad. Kozuki-san had a gentle smile on her face as she waved back at the children waving at us. Kiriakun, 
Which do you think is heavier? Huh? What are you talking about? The weight of a grown-up's life or the weight of a child's? Okay, I think we've seen all of this. Oh, and we meet Blondie again, but she's forgotten us, which breaks our heart. Oh, and this is the time skip after uh, what's her face has disappeared. Xion. Oh yeah, and the rocket. Something happened with the rocket. I forget. Wait. Hang on. Was that the Botanical Gardens? Okay. The name Botanical Gardens has a stiff scientific ring to it, but as a matter of fact, it was a large and pleasant park. Okay, so Chion's just returned from like a two-month disappearance. On the main path, all we could see were the tall trees that lined up like a wall, but they served as a sort of border that cut the park away from town. I think the plants that grow in Tsukuba are quite special. I get you. Yeah, we've read all of this. Okay, now we need to go find, uh... What's her face? God, I'm forgetting their names now. We need to go find a werewolf girl. What's her name? Kayan. Uh... Last time we sent Fuma off by himself and stuck around with Togi-san and Kozuki-san. Uh, but this time I guess we'll go with Fuma. Alright. I don't want you to hold a grudge against me later. Awesome! You done, my friend! Boo! You should be more sensitive to your surroundings, you know. I, I guess it can't be helped this time, but... Fuma kun I'll remember that. I'll have you know, I make a terrible enemy when you get on my bad side. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Nope. What's the matter? Aren't you going to find Kurumi-san? Chion chan you've changed during your absence. You're sort of... Scary. No, no, I wasn't going to say that. Major Fuma, reporting for duty. Fuma saluted her and dragged me away. Let's go, Captain Yuda. I'm class below you? We found Kurumi-san as soon as we left the greenhouse. We've come to escort you, Colonel. Fuma saluted Kurumi-san. Oh no. He was still going to continue this military thing. Kurumi-san blinked. Hmm, good work, Lieutenant Fukun. She went along with it, and Fuma dropped a few ranks. You too, Officer Yukun. I am still ranked below him, huh? Hehe, <laughs> if I get to order you about, that would be kind of fun. Face death for Kan chan I remembered how I left Togi-san and Kozuki-san to find her. A shiver ran down my spine when I noticed it was a possibility. Okay, and we got the achievement reporting for duty. So what were you doing here, Kan-chan? Hmm, I was just thinking. Do you think only humans have memories? That's a strange thought you've been pondering. And no, more than humans have memories. What do you mean? <sighs> we wouldn't be able to perceive time. Like, other creatures wouldn't be able to perceive motion or movement if they didn't have some form of memory. Not to mention, you know, you can train dogs and cat cats and things like... No, KN. Humans are not the only ones who have memories. I think animals have them too. We have a family dog at home. Whenever I go back, he seems happy to see me. He sounds clever. Maybe even more than you do. Heh <laughs> you think? Hey! Aww. Good boy. God damn it, Fuma. Aren't you gonna rub me all over? 
I'll have to neuter you first. Puma ran away as fast as a greyhound. Getting back to memories. Wow, she's simply going to carry on? What about plants? Plants? There was a study before that plants can get stressed by the environment they're in. Really? But that's a little different from memories, right? For example, taking the entrance test to a university may be a memory, but the vocabulary and knowledge we had to cram into our brains aren't quite something we can reminisce about. Yeah, there's different forms of memory. Is that what we're going to be getting into? Are we Are going to have some weird pseudo-scientific conversation about the different forms of memory now? Ukun's dog is probably happy to see him, because he remembers how much fun they had when they played together, don't you think? Maybe. Then, what about these plants? I come here often, but do you think they remember me? They're not even aware of you. They can't see you. Like... They're in a different kind of existence from you. I'm just somebody that passes by. I wonder if I was ever part of their memories. If they have memories, they would look very different from whatever you're conceiving of, K.N. I'm not being sentimental. Don't look at me so worriedly. I just, you know, started to think about it. I guess I wouldn't have even thought about it if it weren't for IMA. Let's go. Chi-chan and Togi-chan must be waiting for us. What about Fuma? He can come back later. Wow, so harsh. Fuma never returned. <laughs> Did you threaten him? Oh, you want to know? Uh, no thanks. I don't think I need to know. Clever. So, what should we do about fuma -kun? I suppose it's our turn to go pick him up. That's uncharacteristic of you, Togi-san. Suggest that. Okay, then I won't go. I'll stay with you, boy. Togi-san latched onto my arm again. I had a feeling Togi-san was staying closer to me than usual. Why don't you go? He just gave you a compliment. I'll do whatever you ask me to do, boy. Okay, last time I think we sent Togi to um, go get him. So this time we'll go ourselves. Oh well, I guess I should go get him then. Ooh, me too, me too. I'll go with you. Uh, no. I don't think you should. You're the reason he isn't here, so I doubt he'd appreciate it. Who? Well then, Togi-san, if you'd be so kind, uh, can you restrain Kurumi-san for us? Roger. Now, how should I do this? Togi-san smiled evilly and wiggled her fingers. I'll go for the boobs, of course. Take that. No! Togi-chan! I stared at them, eager to see how things would progress, but someone clapped a hand over my eyes. No, Kiriakun, this is too much for you. Fucking anime. Um, I'm of legal age. No! It's too much for you, okay? Yes, ma'am. Let's go find Fumakun. Staying this way. With my eyes covered? And we got the achievement a couple, question mark. I didn't know how far I walked blindly. It felt like ages, although I could hear laughter coming from somewhere. Was it Kozuki-san? Or was it other visitors that thought we looked like we were doing something silly? Um, is it just me, or are we being laughed at? Maybe. Perhaps people think we're some silly couple doing something. Oh no. Hmm? Do you mind? No, I don't mind that. Are you fearful now that you can't see your surroundings? I'm your only guide. You have to put your trust in me. <laughs> Mizuki-chan mentioned something called Stockholm Syndrome. Apparently, when people are held in a captive or hostage situation, sometimes they develop positive feelings towards their captor. xian chan what happened to you during that two months absence? You're uh, behaving strangely. I suppose it's a form of brainwashing. 
You're being scary. You're joking, right? Do you think so? Maybe I really want you to like me. Um, what do you mean? You want to know? If you do, you can't unhear it, you know. I can't pretend I didn't say anything. And what you perceive of me would change in you forever. Do you want to hear it? Oh, this is interesting. Unfortunately, it has just hit the hour, so I think we'll do a save, and we'll figure out if we want to know something uh, next time. Uh, hang on, I did the wrong thing. I want to save. We'll save that. Labyrinths and flowers and knowledge in number five. Yes. Okay then, so we'll make that decision uh, next Saturday. Let's head on over to Just Chatting. And we'll close the game down. Okay, thanks everyone for uh, who uh, came in here, in here and uh, stuck by for the entire stream. Uh, let's have a look-see, who is online? Um, okay. Okay, we got uh, animators on. Uh, let's go with a. Uh, oh, we have. I don't. I'm not sure if we ever rated her. But uh, we'll start that rate up. So. Let us think. What are we doing on Monday? I don't remember. I'm not sure that we have a game that we've already started on Monday, so we'll be starting something new. Then Wednesday we've got uh, Puzzle Agent 2, we've got more of that coming up. Friday, I know we're doing a little bit of getting all the endings in uh, We Know the Devil. And then of course, next Saturday we'll be doing more of uh, Campus Notes, now that we've hit one ending and uh, are trying to get more endings unlocked. So yeah, thanks to Leonic, Sungat, um, Soupy Doorman, and uh, anyone else who's been lurking or, or hanging around. Uh, you are all my little humblebees. Thank you for uh, putting up with my voice acting. And uh, putting up with any kind of cringe you may have had to suffer through to watch this. Um, I love you all. And I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.